Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Thank you for your support and I appreciate all your votes on my another project. The winner is the model of the German Wolfwaffe fighter aircraft, the Messerschmitt BF 109G14. The Eduard brand has grown from a small supply of parts and accessories to one of the best model brands in Europe. That's why I chose the model of this legendary fighter from them. Not only the kit includes throughout details instructions of the machine with beautiful and colorful illustrations, but it also offers very high quality grey plastic moldings and many clear parts and lots of more accessories. The kit can be also modified to another version of Gustav, not only the G14 as we know all from other kits. The box contains up to 5 camouflages from 1944 to 1945. The decals are also very high quality. Swastikas are of course in several parts. The manufacturer don't want to outrage the public. Very smart. Another big plus of the profit pack kit are the photo edge metal parts for the cockpit and cockpit masks. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. Hmm, I'm very excited. Maybe some modification will occur me during the build, we will see. Ok, no more talking, let's get started. As always, I began to build the model with the cockpit. First, I cut out all parts from the plastic sprues and clean them with a sharp knife. For the cockpit, I will use the photo edge parts, but before that, some of the plastic parts must be glued together. The cockpit is very easy to assemble but be careful with the small parts, you can lose them very quickly. I must admit that I don't belong to the people who have order in their small workplace. Yeah, I'm guilty, so please be aware. It happened a few times that I lost an important part of a cockpit or antenna and I spent an hour searching with a magnifying glass to the whole carpet. Beside the cockpit, I also decided to work on the landing gear base. I will upgrade them with a scratch built hydraulic system for the landing gear. The plastic parts are great in details and easy to assemble. Now I use Rebel Contact Glue and glue the lower and upper parts of the wings together. There is a small problem with the fit on the end of the lower part of the wing. It needs to be sanded down and repaired, but I will come to that later. The Eduard kit contains extended and fallen wings, leading edges and flaps. Very good option, I don't need to cut them out out of the plastic. Ok, that's enough with the wings assembly. Let's begin to paint the cockpit. I had the idea to create a chip of and dirty cockpit full of scratches. The easiest way to paint the cockpit is first to apply a layer of metallic paint and overspray it with ordinary hairspray. Now I add a layer of hairspray over the parts and let them properly dry for some time. The hairspray creates an invisible film and when I overspray it with a layer of paint, it can be scraped off from the surface. Now I paint the cockpit with Mr. Color C116 color. To create scratches on the surface, you can use a toothpick. Be careful and patient. When you hurry up, you will only make things worse. I have some books over the 109 that I bought in an excellent bookstore when I was visiting an old friend in Czech Republic. They are full of details and pictures. They will definitely help me with the whole build. Now I paint the small details and add a layer of clear varnish. The details are small levers, buttons 
oxygen system and indicators. Next, I wash the whole cockpit with a dark brown oil wash. Oil washes can create nice shadows at joints and highlight details. After cleaning with a cotton swab, some percentage of the wash remains on the surface and it creates a nice patina look. The Messerschmitt serves in all areas of the wall, so I can't forget to add pigments. The cockpits were very often dirty inside from the field conditions at the front. Now I can start to glue the photo edge parts. I use cyanide acrylate super glue, but you can also use PVA glue or clear varnish. It's best to try each alternative out. Each product has its own pros and cons. Photo edge parts are an excellent accessory to any model. Of course, it's on you if you want to choose them. I like to change accessories between photo edge parts and resin parts. Now I continue on the landing gear and landing gear base. I painted with Mr. Color C60 light grey color. I checked out some pictures of the landing gear legs and I decided to upgrade it with a hydraulic system from scratch. For this scratch build, I used some copper and nylon wires. I formed them into a kneaded shape and glued them with a super glue. For painting of the details, I use a thin paintbrush. Next, I add a layer of varnish and vent the whole gear system with oil washes. The water radio parts have very nice moldings, but I replaced them with photo edge parts. Now I glue the radiator covers with very thin layer of Mr. Cement glue. I will stay a bit longer with the landing gear. The wheels are easy to assemble. There are molding lines on the surface and I need to send them down and rebuild the tire thread with a sharp knife. After repairing, I paint the wheels with a black semi-gloss color and weather them with a dark grey oil wash. I mentioned before that I want to make some small modifications. 
That's why I ordered an Eduard Resin Daimler Benz 605 engine with machine guns and a radio station. The resin parts are great in details, but they are very fragile, so I must be very careful. For this work step, I will use my Extol micro drill. Basically, it's a very cheap micro drill, but it includes lots of tools with it for a good price. Working with resin parts is a dangerous job. Inhaling the harmful resin dust can cause cancer, so always use a mask. The best solution is to ventilate the room immediately after work. Vacuum excess dust and wash your work tub with water. After cutting out, I clean all parts with a sharp knife, pair them with light and dark grey colors and apply washes. The assembly wasn't without problems, some areas were a bit tricky. For gluing all parts I used cyanide acrylic superglue. The last step of this work step was to cut out the hole for the cover. First, I drew out holes with my micro drill, cut it out with an engraver knife, and smoothed out the cut lines with a P600 sandpaper. At the end, I glued the photo edge metal frame with a super glue and painted with a light grey color. Now it's time to work on the Daimler Benz 605 engine with machine gun holders. As you can see, the resin kit has a like a million pieces. So it'd be a lot of fun to cut them out out of the molding. Yay! But before that, I cut out the engine and machine gun covers out of the original fuselage. You can use a micro drill with a cutting tool, but to be sure to not damage in the fragile plastic, I progressed the slow old school way. After cutting out, I clean the edges with a sharp knife and sand down with the sandpaper. Cutting of the engine parts took me a long time. There were so many of them. I can't put every step into a video because just the engine build would take me like 20 minutes. I glue all the resin and photo edge parts with a super glue. I have the experience that my super glue likes to glue my fingers together more than my models, but this resin part took a strong bong between uh, just a few seconds.
The engine instructions have 32 steps, and lots of them lead to equip the engine with scratch-built hydraulic hoses from different diameters. After the engine build is complete, I add a layer of Mr. Surfacer 1000. The machine gun holders and engine covers are painted with Mr. Color C60 light grey and the engine block with a black semi-gloss color. Now I paint the small details with silver, aluminum, matte black and steel colors. Before varnishing, I dry brush all parts with dark grey paint. Next, I apply decals on the engine block and seal it with a layer of varnish. At the end of the engine build, I weather all part of the deep brown oil wash. Finally, I can assemble the fuselage together. First of all, I glue the cockpit and the radio station to the fuselage. Now I glue the engine holders with a super glue and assemble the engine system to the one on ice fuselage. I must admit that the assembly wasn't without problems. Everything sits very tight together so I didn't manage to assemble it for the first time. If you don't have patience and nerves for this kind of adventure, don't even try it. During the assembly, the fuselage started to slightly open up. Before I continue, I had to fill these imperfections with putty. I sanded down the putty with a P320 and smoothed out the surface with a P600 sandpaper. Now I continue with the tail assembly. The kit has two options with the reticle stabilizers. It depends on the version of 109 which you want to build. I let the horizontal stabilizers in the lower position. It looks much better than in a straight line. The kit also includes masks for the clear parts. So the applying was very easy and straightforward. But there are areas that need to be masked with a liquid mask. A good tip, glue the clear parts on the model with PVA glue for a united camouflage. After painting, you can easily remove the clear parts and continue to work on them. For example, gluing some photo edge parts.
the model is getting ready for painting. But before that, I mask all parts with a masking tape and make some final assemblies. As a primer code, I use Mr. Surface 1000. After surfacing, I highlight all panel lines with appreciating technique. Now I'll start painting the elements of the identification, such as the yellow cover of the oil cooler. Yellow paint does not overlap for the first time. You need to apply more layers. A good tip is to use a white color base. Before I paint the camouflage, I cover the oil cooler cover with a masking tape. I don't want to overspray the yellow paint with the camouflage, so I mask the oil cooler with the Italeri masking tape. For this camouflage, I use Mr. Color C15 light blue, C37 gray violet, and C36 gray green colors. I spray the lower parts with my Chromex BT-130 airbrush 0.2mm nozzle. I use this airbrush only for large areas and varnishing. For final work I use my cheap Fenda BT-180 with 0.25mm nozzle. It's probably one of the cheapest airbrushes on the market, but it's very effective and it costs only 20 euros a piece. The color transition on the wings is sharper than on the fuselage, therefore I use masking putty. The camouflage is finished, now I paint all small details with a thin paintbrush. Before painting, I add a layer of metallic paint and hairspray on the rig surface. Now it's easy to imitate scratches and peel off camouflage. After all parts are painted, I add a layer of clear varnish to protect the camouflage from dust. It's also time to apply decals. At the beginning of the video, I praised the decals. Well, I must say I was disappointed. Although they are very nice and colorful, but when I apply them on the model, it happened several times that they were too fragile and tore apart. For a better fit of the decals on the surface, I used Revel Decal Softener. Now I steal the decals with a clear varnish. Next, I weather the 109 with a deep brown panel line wash. The panel line wash dries out after 20 minutes, and now I remove the excessive wash with a cotton swab. For weathering, I'll take my time. First, I highlight all panels with a white oil paint. Now, I take a clean, dry, flat paintbrush and blend the oil paint with the surface to imitate worn off camouflage. I'll stick with the bottom of the f a little bit longer. Now, I imitate oilix and dirt with a mix of burnt sienna and burnt umber oil paint.
Next is the upper part. For this weathering, I use a lightly grey tone by mixing white and black oil paints. This weathering procedure is very time consuming and costs a lot of patience, but it's worth it. It looks much better now. Now I imitate more scratches with metallic and grey paints using only a paintbrush. Now I seal the oil paint weathering with a layer of semi-gloss varnish. Before I start assembling the Messerschmitt, I spray the gas exhaust by using the red, brown and grey colors. Now I remove the cockpit mask and the Gustav is ready for assembly. First, I glue the engine covers, spinners with the propeller and the Erla cockpit canopy. The antenna wire assembly was a little bit annoying, lots of patience was needed. At the end of the build, I weathered the exhaust pipes with light rust and the landing gear with dust and the European earth pigments. As an addition to the model, I created a small base from MDF board with static grass. Alright, the Eduard 1248 scale Messerschmitt BF 109G14 is finally finished. This build was a relaxing one and was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel, like, or if you want to ask me something about my hobby or this build, leave me a comment. I will answer your question. Also, if you want to follow my lady's work, you can join me on Facebook or Instagram. There is a link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.